Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chris Dunn and in this video series, you're going to be learning all about Bitcoin fundamental analysis. About eight years ago, I did my first video series on Bitcoin, which was titled Bitcoin Basics. And over the years, I've done a lot of videos about technical analysis and trading. And so in this video series, I want to talk about fundamental analysis. And this is actually going to be a five part video series where in this video, in part number one, we're going to be talking about token economics. And in part two, we're going to be talking about growth metrics. Part three is all about valuation models. Part four is market timing tools. And then in part five, it's about off chain fundamental factors. So let's start by answering the big question, which is what is fundamental analysis and why does it matter, particularly in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? So fundamental analysis is the study of forces that affects the price of an asset. So where technical analysis is looking at a price chart and using different indicators to try to quantify price and predict what's going to happen in the future, Fundamental analysis is looking at all of the economic factors. So it, it can be anything from intrinsic factors, macroeconomic factors, or microeconomic forces that impact the price of Bitcoin. And the reason we use fundamental analysis is the end goal is to help you determine a value that you place on an asset so you can determine if it's currently undervalued or overvalued. And I want to emphasize the you because when we look at the question, what is Bitcoin's value? Uh, what is it now and what could it be in the future? It's very subjective, meaning that everybody has a different opinion and we can use models and different forms of analysis to come to our own conclusion. You know, maybe you've heard somebody in the media that says Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. It's worthless and it's a bubble and it's going to go to zero. And then on the other hand, you have some people that say, look, Bitcoin is the best form of money in the history of humanity and it's going to eat all the other fiat currencies in the world and become the dominant world reserve currency. And then there's opinions all in between that spectrum. So fundamental analysis is a process that you can go through to figure out, well, what is Bitcoin? How does it work? And what is it worth to you? So if you've heard the term fundamental analysis before, you've probably heard it applied to the stock market, right? It's a really popular way that people use to value companies to buy and sell stocks. So if we look at this example of Apple, you can see that, you know, some common fundamental metrics are things like market cap, right? Like what's the total value of Apple? Uh, what is its income, its sales, its PE ratios, its price to book ratios? Well, what is the float, the outstanding shares? What are, you know, the short ratio? You can look at its sales. You can look at its net profits. These are all metrics specific to publicly traded companies that investors like you and me will use to make our investment decisions. Now, when we look at Bitcoin, obviously this is not a publicly traded company. It's not selling iPhones like Apple, right? Bitcoin is a new asset. It's really only been around about a decade. And so there's a totally different set of fundamental analysis metrics that we need to look at to determine its value. So let's take a look at the specific categories of fundamental metrics that we look at with Bitcoin. The first is supply plan and metrics. The second is valuation metrics. The third is on-chain activity. Number four is exchange metrics and trading activity. And then the final one, number five, is mining structure and metrics around mining. So again, you can see this has nothing to do with sales and price to earnings ratios. It's basically everything that is specific to the Bitcoin protocol and how people are using and exchanging Bitcoin either peer to peer or over in exchange. The first thing that we look at with the cryptocurrency is we ask, is it a fixed supply or does it have an uncapped supply? And when Bitcoin was created, it was predetermined that there would only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. And so once you know if it has a fixed supply or an uncapped supply, the next question would be, well, what is the current supply? And what is the future supply, right? Have 99% of the coins already been minted or is it just getting started, right? It's good to know where you are in that timeline. And you can see at the time that I'm recording this video, the uh, total supply is about 18 and a half million Bitcoins, which means that almost 90% of the Bitcoins that will ever be in circulation have already been mined. And then the next thing we look at is the inflation rate. 
Basically, how many new coins are coming into the ecosystem divided by the current supply? So if we take a look at this chart, you can see that over the past 10 years, as Bitcoin's price has continued to go up over time, the inflation rate has continued to fall over time. And at the time of this video, we're currently around one and a half percent inflation rate. And then if we take a look at the stock to flow ratio, you can see this is kind of a forward projecting chart that anticipates based on block halves where price could go into the future. And again, this is more of a model that we'll cover more in a later video, but this just gives you a good idea of how a decreasing supply over time inherently pushes prices to the upside. And the stock to flow ratio was actually created by this guy, Plan B, and I'll link to all these resources in the description if you guys wanna go through and read all of this. And then the next thing you wanna think about with the supply plan is how divisible is the crypto that you're looking at? In Bitcoin's scenario, it's divisible, it breaks down to the eighth decimal place. So basically 100 million Satoshis. So what you can tell all your friends and family is, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a fraction of a Bitcoin. And that leads us to the second category where things get really fun, which is the value metrics. And the first thing we look at is what is the price per coin? So going back to this chart, you can see again, about 10 years ago, the price of Bitcoin went from basically nothing to the peak of about 20,000 here in 2017 and has just continued to be trending up over time. And so whenever you see the price of Bitcoin quoted, that is again, the price of one whole Bitcoin. And then the second metric we look at is the market capitalization. So what you do is you take the price per coin times the current supply of coins. So if the price of Bitcoin is say $10,000 and there's 18 million Bitcoins out there, you simply take 10,000 times 18 million and that is the market cap. Now you wanna be careful using market cap numbers in the cryptocurrency space because they can actually be really deceiving for a number of reasons. But uh, what we'll do in this video is take a look at a couple of other ways that you can measure total value of an ecosystem. And one of those metrics is called realized cap. And what we're doing there is we are assuming that there are lost coins. And you may have heard of some stories where a guy left millions of dollars of Bitcoin on a hardware wallet or on his hard drive and threw it in a dumpster and then poof, tens of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin have basically disappeared because nobody could ever get access to those coins again. And there's still a ton of coins that are locked up from Satoshi's early days that have never moved on the blockchain before. So you can see on this chart, this is comparing Bitcoin's market cap in green, which is a lot more volatile than the realized cap, which is this smoother red line. And Coinmetrics wrote this article where they went into detail about how they calculated realized cap and basically the realized cap is an attempt to improve the market cap by trying to discount coins that might be lost. So those are kind of two simple metrics to figure out what the total value of all the current Bitcoins in the world are. Now the next metric we look at is lending rates. And you can see here, this is a snapshot of some of the different lending rates on the different exchanges. Some other key value metrics are the current all-time high and the yearly lows. So Bitcoin's price is really, really volatile, meaning it has massive swings up and down. And it's important to know what the current all-time high in price is and also what the yearly lows are. One of the last videos I published, I talked about how looking at those yearly lows has historically been a good place to accumulate or buy Bitcoin. And then some other interesting metrics to look at are the return on your investment by day, month, year, and decade. And you can see here, you can find a short-term ROI, anything from a week, a month, a quarter, a year, uh, all the way up to looking at individual years. And the third category is on-chain activity. This is where things get really interesting. So we can look at things like active addresses, how many Bitcoin wallets are actively trading or holding Bitcoin how many new addresses are coming into the ecosystem. And on this chart, we are comparing Bitcoin's price over time compared to this orange line, which is the number of active addresses, which you can see tends to peak out when prices go parabolic, but you'll notice there's steady growth over time and we're about to actually hit a new all time high here. And when we look at the number of new addresses, this is calculated by the number of unique addresses that appeared for the first time in a transaction. And some other things we can look at are the number of transactions, average transaction size, 
and new blocks. And one thing that's really interesting to see is how the active addresses and the number of transactions and the average transaction sizes have also been increasing over time, which is just a really positive sign for Bitcoin's development. And in some of the later videos in the series, we'll drill down into the different on-chain metrics that can actually help us figure out when it's a really good time to buy or sell or just hold. And then the next category of metrics we look at is exchange metrics and trading activity. So I'm talking about things like total exchange trading volume, basically how many Bitcoins are being traded over publicly listed exchanges. And this is where you also have to be really careful. So you'll have listings where it shows reported volume from a bunch of different exchanges. And you can see this is showing what, $23 billion over the past 24 hours. But unfortunately in the crypto space, we cannot trust a lot of exchanges around the world. And so a lot of websites will actually give adjusted volume showing what they think is the actual real volume where they get rid of wash trading and a lot of like really unethical behavior. So the real volume they're showing is only about 1.2 or 1.3 billion in volume over the past 24 hours, which is a dramatic reduction on what's actually being reported by a lot of exchanges. And on Masari here, you can see that they basically group these into two categories. You have a bunch of exchanges which are under kind of the quote unquote trusted exchange list. And then down here you have excluded markets. And this is where exchange diversification comes in. So Bitcoin is the largest cryptocurrency, so it trades on all the major exchanges. But if you're looking at an altcoin or a smaller cryptocurrency, you wanna look at the exchanges it's trading on. And I really like to see when there's diversification, meaning it's not just trading in one place. Because if that coin gets delisted, you really have nowhere to buy and sell that coin and you might get stuck holding a worthless token. And the third thing we look at here is exchange flows. And there's several different things we can look at, but it's basically the flow of capital into and off of exchanges. And there are a bunch of metrics that we can look at when it comes to exchanges. Uh, this one in particular is pretty interesting. It's exchange net flow volume. So what we're looking at here is the difference of the flow of volume into exchanges and out of exchanges. Basically coins that are coming onto an exchange, so people sending uh, Bitcoin to an exchange or taking them out of an exchange. You can also look at individually the number of exchange deposits and the number of exchange withdrawals. And some of these exchange metrics can actually give us insight into investor and trader behavior and what might happen to the price in the future. We can also look at trading volume location. That means where in the world is the trading volume occurring? For example, back in 2013, a large majority of the trading volume was actually coming from China, where today a little over 50% is actually coming from Western countries. So you can see on this chart, we break it down in between East and West by time zones. And you can see over the past couple of weeks, the West has dominated most days. It's up around you know, 55 to 60%. Um, and you have the occasional day where the East is over 50% of the volume. So again, this is not only helpful for Bitcoin, but also altcoins. If you're looking at a cryptocurrency and you see it's 95% coming from the East, maybe it's mostly trading on Asian exchanges. And the next category is mining structure and metrics around mining. So the first thing is, what is the consensus? Is it proof of work? Is it proof of stake? Or is it something else? Basically, how are miners securing the network? And so on the profile tab here under Bitcoin, you can see the consensus here is proof of work. And the next thing you wanna think about is the governance. Basically, how are decisions made that influence the future development of Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency? You can see under the governance tab here, it gives a really detailed uh, history and explanation of how uh, Bitcoin's governance is created and what rules are decided upon. And this is really important because you want to know, is it one guy in his basement trying to influence the direction of the network? Or is it a consensus of a bunch of developers? Or is it something completely different? Another metric to think about is block time. Basically, how often is a new block mined in Bitcoin or another blockchain? And you can see the average block time for Bitcoin is around 10 minutes and the current block reward is 6.25 Bitcoins gets released about every 10 minutes. And the block reward is really valuable to know because that ultimately determines how profitable miners are. 
And the next thing you want to know is what is the median fee, right? What is a transaction cost on Bitcoin or another blockchain? And then the final thing to look at here is the hash rate. So the hash rate is basically how many hashes per second are produced by miners in the network. And you can see over time as Bitcoin's price goes up, so does the hash rate. So at some level, the higher the price of Bitcoin and the higher the hash rate, the more secure the network becomes. So I hope now you have a good understanding of some of the basics of Bitcoin's token economics. In the next video, we're gonna look at some of Bitcoin's growth metrics and how to tell if it's growing in a healthy way or maybe it's weak. And after that, then we'll dive into some different valuation models, basically mental models that we can use to predict Bitcoin's value into the future. And we'll also look at market timing tools, basically how to know when is it a good time to buy and when is it a good time to sell. That's when a lot of this on-chain stuff really comes together. And then we'll wrap it up with looking at some off-chain metrics that can influence Bitcoin's price on a fundamental level. Basically, uh, different things that happen in the world that influence Bitcoin's price. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody that you think would get value from it. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care.